This is it then, the Las Vegas Grand Prix, Formula One in Nevada. A track that provides some real interesting challenges for all of the teams, the drivers and the engineers. The track layout is quite different to anything seen on the rest of the schedule. And the temperatures at the circuit are very, very different to what we've seen before. It's really gonna be interesting to see how the teams are going to set their cars up, particularly in this ground effect era for I can see what's happened here. This is the wrong Las Vegas Grand Prix. This clip is nearly as old as I am. Uh, early 1980s, Formula One came to Las Vegas and raced around Caesar's Palace. But this old clip gives me a little bit of an idea. Might have to chat to producer Kev about this one. I wonder if we should take a closer look at some of these cars in a future episode of Tech Talk. Ah, I think we might have to do that. But let's look at the correct Las Vegas circuit, this monster new track around the streets of the Sin City. The old Caesars Palace circuit was somewhere up here and you could fit the entire circuit, which was running a car park of a casino, on the infield of the new circuit at least three times over. It's so big, this new six kilometer track. And this track could probably be best described as Monza with walls. And by that, I mean, it's an extremely fast circuit as the cars hair down the strip. Then they've got long straight sections all the way around the lap, lots of full throttle time. This is a very, very fast race circuit indeed. But the weather I mentioned is also a big factor. In that old Caesars Palace Grand Prix, the temperatures were so high that drivers, course workers, and even spectators had to be treated for heat stroke. Well, there's no risk of that this year in the new Las Vegas circuit, because actually this is the coldest track of the year, the coldest race weekend of the year. Not as cold as some people have sort of fear-mongered going into the race weekend. I think a few people are feeling a little bit warmer than they expected. However, the speed, the cool temperatures and the high speed nature of the track has meant the teams have had to prepare their cars in a slightly different way. It is sort of a Monza plus. Monza, where the Italian Grand Prix is hosted, has the highest average speed of any track on the calendar. Well, we'll see what this one puts out when it rubbers in a little bit. Take a look at McLaren's front brake ducts. These are the front brake ducts that the McLaren team have brought along with them to Las Vegas. Pretty much similar concept, similar shape to what we've seen all season from the Papaya team. But when you look at that shape and compare it to the brake ducts they had in the high altitude of Mexico City, look at the huge cooling scoop they had to use in Mexico City compared to the very small cooling scoop they have in Las Vegas. And that's down to the altitude of Mexico City. Both tracks have extremely high top speeds. We don't quite know how fast the cars are going to go down the strip in Las Vegas yet, but we'll see as the weekend progresses. I think it's going to be really high speeds, possibly rivaling that of Mexico City, the fastest straight of the season so far. But because Mexico is so high up, there's not much air density, whereas Las Vegas is cold and the air is much denser, the airflow through these parts at high speed for every second the car is at 300 kph, more air is flowing through that small little opening there than it would be in the low air density of Mexico City. So McLaren is just slimming everything down and trying to reduce the aerodynamic drag of the car. Remember back at Mexico City, all the teams had those big wings. Well, it's quite the opposite here in Las Vegas. But cooling also has effects on other parts of the car. Aston Martin here have completely closed up all of those cooling gills you see along the bodywork, other circuits. They're all gone. The bodywork is completely smooth and it looks really pretty in my opinion. But they've also tightened up the rear air cooling exit of the car. Similar concept to what we saw at Monza again, but slightly more extreme. And that's sort of the message you get up and down the grid. And as I mentioned, cutting all of that aerodynamic drag away, well, it's no surprise, a lot of teams have bought different wing packages, Aston Martin being one of them. This is the wing package, the upper flap and the lower, the middle flap is the one to look at here. They've changed the, the layout of these flaps ever so slightly just to cut the drag out, balance the car the way they want to all the way around this circuit, try and get the car up to as high a top speed as possible. Something the Aston Martin struggled with all season long. They need to trim a bit more drag out of that car. And that Mercedes power unit isn't always at the top of the speed traps either. Unless you're in a Williams and very different concept there. 
So that's the wing they've bought to Las Vegas for the low drag characteristic, but they can fall back on the older, higher downforce wing, which also produces more drag. And just take a look at the sponsor logo on the middle element there. They can fit the whole sponsor logo on that one element. Whereas you look at the Las Vegas specification wing, the same size sticker has to be put across two separate elements of the wing. Again, higher speed, more air coming across that with those wing elements. You get a bit more downforce because you're going faster as an average speed. However, you want to lose that drag. So it's about the aerodynamic efficiency, that trade-off between drag and downforce. And that's what they're all going to be fighting all weekend long. Similar situation at the rear of the car. Williams here with their very snazzy rear end, Logan Sargent's car here. They've gone for their Monza wing, just like this, but with a little gurney flap just across the upper flap of it as well. And you'll see that on a few cars up and down the pit lane. McLaren, for example, very similar setup. They've gone for a tiny wing. It's almost like a tea tray. It's a very, very small wing. And this is a team that's run quite big wings at certain circuits. We know the McLaren's a bit draggier than the team want it to be, but this could be a good track for them if they can get their tires working, get away from Red Bull's advantage of tire wear. Well, I don't think that's gonna be a problem here too much. So the McLaren wing is something worth looking at. And it's not just the upper elements of the rear wing you worth taking a look at. You need to look at the lower beam wing as well down here. McLaren have done a lot of work all season long on this part of the car. And I've lost count of the number of different wing variations we've seen from the Papaya team. But when you look at the car from the rear, you can actually see maybe where they've got a little bit of inspiration from. I think I first saw this upper element shape, this lower drag upper element shape, from the Alpine team. And Alpine themselves are a car we're gonna take a little bit of a look at just in a moment. That lower element of the McLaren though, we've seen that a few tracks before, but this sort of arrangement, fairly standard for F1 in 2023. Again, another team that's really closed up the bodywork here. Look how tight that is, these little like, cooling outlets. That's where all of that hot air from underneath the engine bay comes scooting out the back of the car, close it up as much as possible, reduce the aerodynamic drag, go as fast as possible down the straights. And because it's so cold, the ambient temperature is so cold, you don't need to worry about cooling the car so much because you've got that high average speed, low ambient temperature, you don't need much cooling on the car. So you can just give it all up for drag. Alpine, same story here. Front wing is cut down quite extraordinarily. That upper element is barely there anymore. And you can see how the team have really sliced out this chunk of wing at the top. I mean, previously the wing would have gone along sort of like this, but no, that's all gone, chopped it out. They haven't quite taken an angle grinder to it and cut it out, but the concept's sort of the same. So big change there for Alpine, again, cutting that drag down. And you can see a similar story at the rear, rather than going for a twin element lower beam wing, Alpine have turned up with just a single element lower beam wing. Again, an attempt to seriously reduce the drag at the rear of that car. And something else that they've removed that we've seen on a lot of other cars, and this is a bit of a brave move from Alpine. You may have seen on a number of occasions on this show, we've talked about the little aerodynamic elements that stick out from the rear brake cooling exit. And that's actually been completely deleted off the back of the Alpine. Another attempt, quite an extreme attempt, to reduce the overall drag of the car. But for me, Alpine is a car that we haven't really spoken that much about on this show in 2023. And it seems that the car's quite sort of neither here nor there. It's a works car, but it's the only car using a Renault power unit. And the team and the car don't seem to be quite delivering what's been expected. Lots of changes in management of the team. And I do kind of wonder what the good and bad points of the car are. And so we got Laura Winter to go and talk to Kyron Pilby, one of the engineers at the team, and try and find out from him exactly what those strengths and weaknesses truly are. Um, I'm not sure this car has any particular strengths or weaknesses. It's quite well balanced. It's, um, the, the drivers are reasonably happy with it. Um, it. It's just not fast enough, and we're, or not as fast as we'd like it to be, obviously. So uh, that's the thing we're just, we're just working on, just general improvements all around, really. How much of the learnings you're, you're doing now will you take into next year looking at the 2024 development? Yeah, we do have an opportunity now that our position in the Constructors' Championship is unlikely to change before the end of the year. So it gives us a chance to try a few things over the last few races of the year that, that will hopefully uh, point us in a good direction for next year's car. 
Well, another Formula One team that's got its sights firmly set on next year is Sauber Motorsport. Wait, who? Sauber Motorsport? That is the team or the company that manufactures the current Alfa Romeo Formula One cars. Well, the Italian car company is passing company with the Swiss-based manufacturer at the end of this season, as that team will slowly morph into the Audi Works team in 2026. Be interesting to watch that process play out. But at the rear of the car, the team has bought one rather spectacular but not performance-related upgrade, and that's this rather natty rear paint job, except it's not a paint job, it's a vinyl wrap. And I, I know there must be some engineer somewhere at the team's Hinwheel factory who's twitching that these panels and the patterns don't quite line up on the different panels because they vinyled them separately and not done it as a big paint job. Gone are the days of the old Toro Rosso sprayed beautiful paint jobs that you used to see hand painted at every single track. Those days are gone. And the reason they're gone, well, you can see that illustrated quite clearly on the Mercedes, one of the few teams on the grid that don't have a special Las Vegas livery this weekend. And Mercedes, well, they've been very much sparing on use of any sort of spray can all season long. Little bit of paint on the upper section of the car, but the lower section is all plain carbon fiber still. And it's all about weight saving because at this time of year, the cost cap starts to bite a number of teams. They have to keep a close eye on new components they use and how long each component has to last. And there is an emphasis on making components last longer in this cost cap era. But components that last longer have a longer life, as a rule of thumb, are a little bit heavier. So it's a trade-off with cost versus weight on the car. As long as you're underneath the weight limit, you just have to save and shave off every gram, and a bit of paint could make all of that difference to your car's performance. Sounds ridiculous, there's a few kilos of paint if you paint the complete car, so it does make, make a big difference to the cars as the season goes on. But back to the topic of Sauber Motorsport and the Alfa Romeo team. They have had a few revelations with this car in that they think that they've taken this concept to its absolute limit and for 2024, they're going to change their concept fundamentally. I'm not sure if that means they're gonna copy the so-called Red Bull concept, but it seems quite likely, doesn't it? But that does seem to be a new direction for this team. And helping them out in that new direction is an upgraded CFD cluster at the team's factory. Now, CFD, computational fluid dynamics, is the virtual wind tunnel. It's restricted, its use is restricted, rather like wind tunnel use is restricted under the aerodynamic testing restrictions that all teams face. A new facility could make their aerodynamic development a little bit more efficient. The team's wind tunnel is considered one of the best in Formula One. It's actually the tunnel that Audi used to develop its Le Mans cars and FIA and Formula One used to develop the current technical regulations. So it is a well-known wind tunnel. With a new concept, a new CFD cluster, and new ownership of that team, this could be a team to watch going forwards, and not least because it's driver's new calendar. Well, Alfa Romeo, Sauber Motorsport, they will be taking a new direction next year. I wonder how many other teams up and down the grid will be looking to a new direction after this weekend's Las Vegas Grand Prix.